What do you make of a young man raised in the Ozark Mountains with a vision of hope for the future? A young man driven by the tradition and pride of his family and destined to leave a legacy of change. Born James William Fulbright, he's the fourth of four children. Growing up in Fayetteville, Bill, as his friends call him, works in the family businesses, studying hard and making good grades in school. His hard work pays big dividends when Bill enters college. Not only is he a star pupil at the University of Arkansas, holding down the office of student body president, but one newspaper reporter dubs him a wonder boy for his talents on the tennis court and football field. But it was Bill's quick mind, not his speed as halfback, that would launch him into the next phase of his life. At his mother's urging, Bill applied for and received the coveted Rhodes Scholarship. A dapper and spirited young man, Bill studied at Oxford and earned a law degree at George Washington University. It was an education that would change his direction in life and set the tone for his political career. What do you make of a young man like this? Well, if you're the people of Arkansas, you make a leader. A short stint as law professor at George Washington University, then president of the University of Arkansas, and Bill was ready to throw his hat into the political arena. He began a campaign for Congress seeking the seat in the 3rd District with the help of his wife, Betty. He won by a landslide. 1942, America is in a world war, and Arkansas's freshman congressman, J. William Fulbright, is laying the groundwork for a powerful career in the House and Senate. Other seat committee assignments that control the purse strings. Fulbright was assigned a spot on the House Foreign Relations Committee and went on to influence America's foreign policy and the direction of history. Throughout his political career, he's been known as a dissenter, a man who's willing to challenge the norm and ask the sometimes difficult question, why? The senator asked why, when America's policymakers seemed obsessed with Soviet communism. America's inability to establish a peaceful relationship with China troubled him. But nothing disturbed the senator more than U.S. involvement in Vietnam. He believed it a quagmire from the beginning and took every opportunity to speak out for peace. One of the principal reasons for the <coughs> disintegration and deterioration of our domestic economy is this preoccupation with warfare. J. William Fulbright has always sought peace for his country, and through the years, presidents, including Truman, Johnson, and Kennedy, sought his advice and support. He served as Senate Foreign Relations Committee chairman from 1959 to 1974, longer than any other senator. Many a president would feel the senator's powerful presence on Capitol Hill because the welfare of the country, not a political career, has always been his main objective. This constant challenge for peace would lead the senator to perhaps his greatest, if not longest lasting achievement. The passage of the Fulbright Act, which created a global student exchange program, has touched the lives of literally thousands around the world. The senator fought for it and believes in the idea that understanding and knowledge of other cultures will do more to further peace than any treaty ever written. Fulbrighters, as they're known, are like ambassadors of this idea, spreading the message everywhere. They act together in the support of educational exchange through the Fulbright Association and 43 sister organizations worldwide. 3,500 members strong, the Fulbright Association is made up of alumni and friends of the Fulbright program. The association's newsletter, conferences, and task forces keep Fulbrighters involved with the program and in touch with each other. The Fulbright Association also brought the widower Fulbright his new bride. Harriet Mayer, the association's first executive director in Washington, and Senator Fulbright were married in March of 1990. They serve as key advisors to the worldwide Fulbright alumni movement. President Clinton joins alumni in praise of the Fulbright program. He emphasized the program's importance at the recent Clinton-Yeltsin summit in Vancouver. Uh, you know, when I was a young man, I worked for uh, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Fulbright, there is a scholarship program uh, that carries his name that literally, in my judgment, has changed the whole direction of policy in country after country after country. So I believe this is a very important thing, and I'm going to do everything I can to see that there is a major, major increase in the number of broad-gauged exchanges, and I might say I think that has great support in the United States Congress. That's high praise coming from the leader of the free world. But then praise is no stranger to J. William Fulbright. In Arkansas alone, he's received honorary degree after degree. There's no person in the entire United States who represents study abroad at the collegiate level more than Senator Fulbright. The College of Arts and Sciences at the University of Arkansas is also named in his honor. And a monument in his old hometown square in Fayetteville bears his image. 
but it's his ideas for peace and education, not his own personal image that Fulbright enjoys seeing advanced. Recent movement toward peace and democracy in Central and Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union must offer the senator satisfaction, knowing he set some of the groundwork that made such change possible. The greatest need we have today is to understand our role and that of others in this world, to recognize the responsibility of our country in the struggle toward true world peace and prosperity of all peoples. I'd like to say a special word of thanks to you, all of you, for the warm reception you gave uh, to the person to whom I owe more than anybody else in this audience, Senator Fulbright. On the centennial celebration of the American University in Washington, the president summed up his feelings for his longtime friend and mentor. When I was barely 20 years old, Senator Fulbright's administrative assistant called me one morning in Arkansas and asked me if I wanted a job working for the Senate Foreign Relations Committee as an assistant clerk. Since I couldn't really afford the cost of my education at Georgetown, I told him I was interested. And he said, well, you can have a part-time job at $3,500 a year or a full-time job at $5,000 a year. I said, how about two part-time jobs? <laughs> He replied that I was just the sort of mathematician they were looking for, and would I please come. The next week, literally a day and a half later, I was there working for a person I had admired uh, all my life, and the rest of it is history. But Senator Fulbright, now 88 years young, taught me a lot about the importance of our connections to the rest of the world, and that even in our small landlocked state of Arkansas, we were bound up inextricably with the future with the passions and the promise of people all across this globe. J. William Fulbright has taught us all a great deal about our connections to the rest of mankind and the importance of peace and understanding. For these lessons and the contributions to our world society, the rest of us say a hearty thank you. Your ideas and your dreams will be with us forever. <laughs>